Chef Del Taldi here guys. We are all about steaks today. So I'm gonna show you how to choose and sear and cook a steak. Um, one of my favorite cuts of meat, especially if you are like a little intimidated about cooking a steak at home, a New York strip, right? Um, New York strip loin has a little bit of fat here. You see that this cut of meat, it's one boneless, but two also has this beautiful flex of, of white inside this meat right here. And that's what you're looking for in a good steak. Um, you want that meat, uh, you want that fat inside that meat, it's gonna keep it juicy, it's gonna add a lot of flavor. So, um, first thing I do when I cook steaks is one, we've left these steaks out on this cutting board for about um, 10 to 15 minutes to bring it down to room temperature. You wanna cook your steaks at room temperature because it's gonna help cook it more evenly. A healthy amount of salt and pepper. Well, actually, I'm just doing salt right now and I like to finish with pepper. So it looks like a ton of salt. And it is, it's a lot of salt, but if you think about it, these are about one inch steaks. Everything inside isn't getting seasoned. So you're just seasoning the outside. We have our pan here, we preheated it. It's got to be very hot, ripping hot. All right, you need to see that oil kind of dance around just like in that pan right there. All right. Second, when you put your steaks into a pan, right? You place it down away from you, so it falls that way, so you don't splash any of that hot oil onto you. And then, it's like the hardest part. Don't do anything. Don't touch it. Answer an email. Uh, make sure your kid's not crawling around, putting things in his mouth. Just let it go. At maybe add a little pressure down here. You wanna build a beautiful crust, and you can't build a beautiful crust if you keep moving it and flipping it. Um, you wanna just let it do its thing. You know, I love cooking steaks on an open fire, um, you know, over charcoal or hardwood, but my preferred method of cooking a steak is in a cast iron skillet or a uh, nice steel pan. Um, I think you get this really beautiful crust. You don't get the flavor of like wood or charcoal, but what you do get is the ability to build a sauce within this pan, like I'll show you guys in a little bit. But we're talking about three ingredients, right? There's no marinades on this. There's no crust that we're putting onto this. It's just really good steaks. And if you're buying really good steaks, it doesn't need much. Um, I prefer dry aged steaks, uh, but they're not for everybody. The most important thing for me on a steak is one, that you've seasoned it correctly, you've bought a great steak, but two, that uh, you're treating it in this manner where you're letting it come to room temperature on your board, you're searing it correctly to get a nice crust. And the heat on this, we're not changing the heat on this at all, right? We're letting both sides get nice and crusty, so we're not bringing it up and then down, we're letting it go full blast the entire time. You know, when you start to get cheaper cuts of meat or tougher cuts of meat, that's when you want to start to introduce things like a marinade. Um, I think skirt steak's a great cut of steak. Um, it is a little chewier, so that's when I add things like soy sauce. I might add a little bit of sugar, um, you know, for tougher cuts of meat, right? Like a hanger steak. Um, I will introduce things like pineapple or kiwi for a little bit just to help tenderize it. But with things like a New York strip or a ribeye or filet mignon, they're super tender already, don't do anything to it. You've paid $25, $30 a pound for these steaks. Um, don't do too much to it. We're gonna check them now. I mean, that is about as perfect as you can get with a steak. You want that nice, beautiful crust, that's what we got there. You wanna build this on both sides, not just one side, right? You're eating both sides of the steak. So treat both sides of the steak equally um, with the with same amount of care. We're gonna press this down again also. Another thing on a New York strip, you'll see that there's an edge of fat on the side. What I like to do is I like to, after I've seared both sides, I like to stand them up and get that fat nice and crispy as well.
a lot of questions that I get about cooking steaks is how do I know when it's done? Listen, I've been doing this a while um, and I still honestly don't get it right all the time. But because I cook a lot of steaks, I know when to pull it. My biggest suggestion to you is you find those meat thermometers, um, you find ones that will attach to say uh, uh, an app on your phone, use them. You know, 120 is my baseline for mid rare, 120 to 125. I will pull a steak like this at 125 because it will go up in temperature after it cooks a few degrees. And uh, like 130 mid rare is uh, generally like a mid rare for me. But use the thermometer, they help, they'll save the day. It takes the, uh, the fear of like, is this overcooked or undercooked? I think another part, another thing about steaks that's, if it's undercooked, slice it, pop it in the oven for a few more seconds. Like, don't be afraid that uh, you ruin the steak, you know, just cook it a little longer after you've sliced it. Um, you know, you should eat a steak the way you want to eat it. So even if like, say you like it mid-rare and someone else likes it medium or mid-well, slice your, your half uh, or uh, slice your half to um, mid-rare and then take that other person's steak to a little bit higher of a temperature. So we're gonna check this great sear on the other side. Perfect sear on the other side. We're gonna stand this up on its side and get this fat side nice and crispy. So what I do, if you notice that, I will take it and put it on the edge of the pan so it almost has something to uh, lean on. And now that side, that fat side, will get nice and crispy. There you go. And we'll do the same on the other side. You want all sides to get nice and crispy. So what I do now is I'll take this fat that's inside the pan. Empty it out. Take some butter. Get it into the pan. A couple cloves of garlic, smash it. Garlic into the pan. Now we will reduce the temperature. We'll bring this temperature down to medium. And we will baste our steaks. This will help ensure that the steak gets cooked all the way through and that you're, you know, you're almost creating this garlic butter on these steaks that are going to flavor the entire steak. I mean, you can just smell. I mean, it's like this. It's like a steakhouse style steak right now. You know, when you go to restaurants, this is how they're cooking your steaks. Or underneath, like if you're in a real traditional steakhouse, they'll be underneath like a thousand degree broiler, which you know, not everyone has at home. But you do have a pan. You almost always can get some butter and some garlic and a good steak. Nice thing about the garlic like this, you will serve this garlic with this steak when it gets nice and golden brown. You know, if you're feeling fancy, have a little chopped thyme here, we can add that in. That will help flavor this butter as well. 
parsley would work in this, a little chopped rosemary might work. Steak is done. So when I rest my steak, which is the next part, really important part of cooking steaks, you know, not everybody has a rack at home. Um, I'll just prop it up over either a fork or a spoon so it doesn't stick to the, um, or it's not resting against a pan or a, a, your plate so it doesn't continue to cook and steam. I, you, you created this beautiful crust and you want to keep that crust. So what I always do and just to kind of gild the lily is just pour this beautiful brown butter over my steak. Now you wait minimum five minutes so that those juices in that steak kind of are able to relax and redistribute and then we slice the steak and enjoy. So we've patiently waited for our five minutes. Uh, these steaks look absolutely fantastic. Let's give these guys a cut. See how we did. I mean, I think I nailed that pretty. This old man still got it. It really proves when you have a great steak and good meat, it needs very little except a hot pan and really great seasoning. Guys, enjoy. Please get out there and cook some steaks. Mm -hmm.